Hey guys, how is your preparation going? I hope that it is going well and I have brought to you this video which will cater to your current affairs. So in this video, I hope that you learn something new which you could, which you did not know before watching this video. So let's begin this video. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel, guys, then do subscribe and you can also join our telegram channel where you will get the PDF of this session for free. So the link of that telegram channel is in description below. If you want the PDF, then you can just join that telegram channel. Now let's begin with the first question. So which of the following is not a pillar of the industrial park rating system? Internal infrastructure and utilities, external infrastructure and connectivity, business services and facilities, environment and uh, safety management, green energy systems for buildings. So which one is not a pillar or a parameter of this industrial park creating system? The right answer here is option E. Green energy systems for building is not a parameter. So the right answer is option E. Now, what is this industrial park rating system? Let me first tell you guys that recently the Ministry of Commerce has announced that they will launch, they are planning to launch the version 2.0 of this industrial park rating system. That means there is the 1.0 version as well or the initial version of this uh, industrial park rating system. So today we are going to discuss about that only because the version 2.0 has not been launched yet then there would be a question in your mind that how come ma'am is asking about the parameters if this system has not been launched the new system has not been launched so guys do pay attention to this thing that this system has same parameters in both 1.0 and 2.0 system as far as the news tells us okay since the system has not been launched therefore it is just estimated that the parameters or the domains on which the industrial parks are being assessed in india would remain the same okay and also you need to pay attention to this thing that i did not mention any number ahead of this system i have asked you the basic parameters and since we already have only 1.0 version therefore the parameters of that version would apply here so that was about the basic understanding related to this uh, system. Now let's move on to the survey. So the very first thing is that Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. It is uh, the organization, it is the department that is responsible for this industrial park rating system. So this IPRS assesses the competitiveness of the industrial parks in India. It was first launched in 2018 on a pilot basis with the help of Asian Development Bank and an organization named PWC. Okay. So this IPRS 2.0, why is the government launching this 2.0 version? The government aims to increase the scope of this rating system to include more industrial parks and special economic zones. That is why we need a 2.0 version. Now comes the details about the 1.0 version, industrial park rating system, original industrial park rating system. So as I have told you about the organizations, the purpose is to evaluate the competitiveness of industrial parks across India. Pillars of assessment also we have discussed internal infrastructure and utilities, external infrastructure and connectivity business services and facilities environment and safety management so these are the four pillars on which an industrial park in india is assessed under this system okay and this is the direct picture this picture has been taken in order to simplify it and help you in memorizing the pillars okay you don't have to pay attention to this thing because this is an extra information and not at all important for your examination because there are two reasons first is that it is an old index 2018 may launch water second reason is that this is too much of an information and i don't think that this would be asked in your examination so what is the thing that you need to pay attention to is this the parameters okay the next is the mode of assessment how were these industrial parks assessed 
so they were assessed on the basis of questionnaire and this again is tmi too much of information here i have just provided to you so that you get the idea how is this survey done because it is an indigenous survey conducted by dpiit in partnership with asian development bank therefore all the information even the minutest information related to this index becomes important for you okay number of participating industrial parks now guys only 177 industrial parks were there who participated who answered all the questions of questionnaire okay that is why the number is 177 whereas in the previous picture there were 202 parks that participated in this index but only 177 uh in industrial parks were like that who who gave answers completely next is the best performers so here you can see that it's a long list of uh, industrial parks across each and every pillar so do you have to remember uh, do you have to memorize all of them no you just can memorize the toppers okay across each and every pillar now that was all about the industrial park rating system and index is uh, is prepared to serve the purpose of comparison so we are comparing the industrial parks of india with one another okay so that is the basic purpose behind launching that mark now that rating system has been integrated with this industrial information system and this system is very important from your exam point of view because this system was recently in the news because the land bank system was also integrated with this system so don't worry we will be discussing this news as well but let's first know what this industrial information system is so india aims to achieve 25% share of manufacturing in gross domestic product by 2022 do pay attention that this statement has been taken from the report of iprs 2018 okay so in 2018 this statement was made by the government that out of the total gdp 25% would come from the manufacturing sector and in order to boost that in order to achieve that target this industrial information system was launched so this is nothing but a portal okay let me show you the portal exactly so this is the industrial information system okay hosted by the department of industrial policy and promotion so here you will get all the information related to industries the availability of industries and the uh, availability of resources and, and other information related to industries on this portal okay now the objective is to uh, objective of this industrial information portal is to provide all information about the industrial landscape of india and make it available in a transparent manner so all the information related to industries where what kind of industries are present and which area is more suitable what where in which area in which state you will get the most resources for your preferred type of production for your preferred type of product okay so all of such kinds of information will be provided to this industrial information system now this system has been integrated with the industrial park rating system so not only the information about the industries are available but you can compare the industrial parks of different states for example you can compare the industrial park of odisha with west bengal with any other state of india okay so this is the advantage that is being given to the manufacturers if they want to set up their industries they can use the industrial information system and then they can easily assess the industrial parks and the facilities offered by the state government so which one is more beneficial for their product for example if the odisha government is laying much focus on the cotton industry and if you plan to open a cotton manufacturing industry or processing industry particularly then odisha would be a better state in comparison to west bengal or punjab okay so this is how you can make comparison by using the iis platform and the basic purpose behind launching this platform was to ease the do, ease the doing of business for the investors only so that so that they can invest better 
now i have discussed this point and this point is also discussed the next point is that this platform is being integrated with the india industrial land bank portal so this portal tells about the availability of land for opening their industries availability plus the condition of land plus the availability of resources for industry the suitability of land for establishing the industry all of this information is provided through india industrial land bank and this land bank is integrated with this iis so that means that if you want any information related to the industrial landscape of india if you are an investor or a manufacturer who is willing to open or establish a cotton manufacturing industry then you would preferably go to this industrial information system dashboard and then you can just search that which state offers maximum benefits in the form of subsidies tax in incentives or other kinds of benefits like availability of resources etc then you can just compare the industrial park within that state as well okay so within the state also you have different industrial parks for example you choose maharashtra then also you can compare the industrial parks within maharashtra so this kind of facility is being provided by the government uh, through this information portal india in, uh, industrial information portal now i hope that this is clear to you now let's discuss the next question which is again a very important question and let me tell you before the hand that every statement that i am going to read here in this swach sarvekshan is important and can become a question in your examination every statement harbors a question for you okay so do listen to me very carefully so what is the theme of this swach sarvekshan 2022 namo gange har ghar jungal uh, sorry <laughs> har ghar jal सबका साथ सबका विकास पीपल फर्स्ट जन आंदोलन सो द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी पीपल फर्स्ट इज द थीम ऑफ स्वच्छ सर्वेक्षण 2022 now do pay attention to this thing that it is it is being conducted under the swachh bharat mission urban so only the urban cities will be assessed in this swachh sarvekshan for the year 2022 now as i said that every line here is a question for you so it is the seventh consecutive edition of the swachh sarvekshan 2022 that has been launched by the ministry of health and family welfare swachh bharat mission urban is the mission under which this mission this sarvekshan will be conducted therefore only urban cities will be assessed theme people first focus jan bhagidari that is citizen partnership and well being of front line sanitation workers now let me tell you that what does this focus mean so the cities which have a greater participation from the citizen sides in keeping their cities and surroundings clean and the cities which have taken a great initiative towards improving the security safety and working conditions for the front line sanitation workers would be given a better ranking that is the meaning of this focus okay so these two will be the focus in the swachh sarvekshan 2022 citizen partnership in keeping their surroundings and their cities clean and the well being of the sanitation workers which events will be organized so kachra alag karo basically means segregate the garbage at the source level only in biodegradable non biodegradable and other measures waste to wealth exhibitions will be there uh, these kinds of exhibitions will be uh, organized in order to create awareness among the people that they can reuse recycle their own waste sarvajanik shaucharya safai jan bhagidari utsav which in english means commercial toilet cleaning event with citizen partner participation so this event will also be organized during the swachh sarvekshan 2022 so all of these events aim to spread awareness about the cleanliness and sanitation next new population categories have been added in the swachh sarvekshan 2022 so under 15k 
15 to 25 k small cities that have a population less than 15000 or a population between 15 to 25000 will now be assessed under this swachh sarvekshan 2022 so this has been done in order to increase the participation of small cities in the swachh sarvekshan district ranking so for the first time for the first time do pay attention district rankings have been introduced in the swachh sarvekshan 2022 so at the level of districts only this ranking will also be done so earlier it was based on cities now districts will also be counted scope of swachh sarvekshan 2022 so 100% wards will be taken for the sampling earlier 40% wards were there for sampling from each city now the scope has been increased to 100% coffee table book so ministry of housing and urban affairs has released a coffee table book titled a change of heart so direct question on the name of this coffee table book can be asked in your phase one okay what is the name of the coffee table book that was launched by the ministry of housing and urban urban affairs at the launch event of swatch sarvekshan 2022 then the name would be a change of heart mobile application so the revamped version of swachita app the digital sanitation grievance redressal platform introduced in 2016 by the ministry was launched so the revamped version of this application has been launched so question can be like when was the swachita app launched by the ministry so 2016 would be the right answer so that was all about the Swachita Sarvekshan 2022. So for the next year, only the guidelines or the basic parameters we can say or the uh, superficial information, the surface information related to the Swachita Sarvekshan 2022 have been released right now. The ranking will be taken up, will, uh, the procedure of doing the ranking will be taken up, will be conducted by the ministry. Moving on to the next question. Who is uh, who heads the committee for reforms in the criminal laws? So basically, last year in 2020, this committee was formed in order to reform the criminal laws that are there in India. Okay, CRPC, IPC. So in order to suggest, recommend ways to bring reforms in the age-old uh, laws that are there in India, this committee was formed. Now, who heads this committee? So let me tell you that the Vice Chancellor of National Law University of Delhi is the chair of this committee. At the time when this committee was formed, Ranbir Singh was the Vice Chancellor. Therefore, he was the chair of this committee. But right now, the Vice Chancellor has been changed. And Shri Krishna Deva Rao is the present Vice Chancellor of National Law University. Therefore, by virtue of being the Vice Chancellor of this university, he automatically became the chairperson of this committee as well. So do remember it is Sri Krishna Devarao. Now guys also pay attention to this thing that the Chancellor of the National Law University is the Chief Justice of Delhi High Court and who is this person? It is Dhirubhai Naranbhai Patel at present and whenever this person leaves office or next person assumes charge that person would become the Chancellor of NLU because the chairpersonship, the chairmanship is being held by the chief justice and not one person. Similarly, the chairmanship of this committee is held by this position, the vice chancellor of NLU, not one person. So do pay attention to this thing. Now there was another committee that was in the news. So this committee has got extension. The committee on company law. So this committee has been formed to suggest reforms in the company law and limited liability partnership act okay so that ease of doing business can be improved in india and this committee was launched in 2019 last year also this got extension and right now it has been extended by one year so the tenure has been extended till 2022 the chairperson of this committee is the secretary of ministry of corporate affairs at present that person is rajesh Verma. do remember if the corporate affairs secretary changes then the chairperson of this committee will also change okay so do pay attention to this thing as well who among the following is representing india at the commission on information and democracy so here we have um, 
अनुराग ठाकुर अभिजीत बैनर्जी कौशिक बासु अमार्त्य सेन सी एन राव सी एन आर राव आउट ऑफ दीज ऑप्शन दी राइट आंसर इज अमार्त्य सेन हु इज अ वेरी फेमस इकोनॉमिस्ट एंड अ नोबल लॉरेट इन इकोनॉमिक्स इज वेल नो वॉट इज दिस कमीशन एंड वाई इज इट इन द न्यूज द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस इज दैट द रिसेंट समिट फॉर इंफॉर्मेशन एंड डेमोक्रेसी टूक प्लेस एट the consulate general of france in new york alongside the united nation general assembly's 76th session okay so this was attended by anurag thakur who is the present minister of information and broadcasting so that was the news because of which the commission on information and democracy was asked from so you have to keep your horizons wide you have to make it wider in order to crack the examination next is the international partnership on information and democracy so this summit is a very important event of this partnership only international partnership on information and democracy which was launched in 2019 at the 74th united nations general assembly okay there was a very important initiative launched by the prime minister narendra modi during the same session can you guys name that initiative okay moving uh, back to this but partnership so this internal international partnership on information and democracy aims to promote and implement democratic principles in the information and communication space so basically promote democracy via information and communication that is the aim of launching this international partnership on information and democracy promoting democracy via information or media we can say it is an intergovernmental non binding agreement which has been endorsed by 43 countries including india and amartya sen represents india in this commission which is a body of this partnership only so this commission runs this partnership moving on to the next question which country will host the global celebrations for the 10th global media and information literacy week kenya angola ethiopia South Africa Cameroon the right answer is South Africa so global media and information literacy week is observed from 24 to 31st October last week of October do remember this thing they, this year it would be the 10th edition of this week the theme would be the theme for the 2021 is media and information literacy for the public good do memorize this theme next is that this week's global celebration will be held in south africa during the week 11th mil that is media and information literacy and intellect inter intercultural dialogue conference and sixth youth agenda forum will be organized but it will be online the annual observance of global media and information week uh, information literacy week was initiated in 2012 by unesco in order to review uh, on time to time review the progress achieved towards media and information literacy towards spreading the literacy and uh, literacy in media and information related to media and information which country is not a founding member of the blue dot network us japan australia india none of the above so the right answer here is india india is not a founding member of this blue dot network the founding members are us japan and australia now this question has come up from the quad leaders summit that took place in us in washington dc among the quad members quad leaders now there the quad leaders supported or expressed their support for developing resilient and sustain, sustainable infrastructure okay and they also expressed their support for the blue dot network and because of their support because of this being in the news this question is here so what is this blue dot network and what is the agenda or what are the highlights of the quad leader summit that we will be discussing in this question or in the news ahead so the very first thing is the launch of quad fellowship program so this fellowship program has been launched in stem that is science um, uh, science technology engineering mathematics so 
in stem the students from each and every quad countries can uh, can pursue their degree courses can pursue their graduation in american universities and 25 students from each university from each country basically will be selected so in total every year 100 students will be given an opportunity by american universities to pursue their graduate courses higher education courses in stem under the quad fellowship program now the sponsors of this program are accenture blackstone boeing google mastercard and western digital and this program is pioneered by smith futures which is a philanthropic organization next is code vaccine expert group so this group is already there but they the quad members basically discussed or highlighted this group that is why it is here so this group comprises top experts from quad governments each from every quad country so how many countries are there four india us japan australia so from each country there are top experts that aim to support indo-pacific health security and covid19 response here the important statement is this that the quad countries will organize a joint pandemic preparedness tabletop exercise in 2022 next point is quad infrastructure partnership so they expressed their support to develop infrastructure uh, sustainable infrastructure and their support towards blue dot network so what is this blue dot network it was launched by these three countries in order to certify infrastructure that is resilient that is sustainable okay so it certifies infrastructure projects based on the economic and social sustainability and in environment friendly practices and transparency okay so these are the parameters on which an infrastructure project is assessed now the blue dot certified infrastructure projects assures the investors of its quality and local stakeholders about its environment sustainability so it is a win-win situation for an infrastructure project if it wins this certification from this network thus it enhances the investor confidence and helps in attracting private funds for the project the global infrastructure hub estimates a shortfall of 15 trillion us dollar in the infrastructure project therefore in order to mobilize private funding in the infrastructure projects this blue dot network was established and how are they mobilizing the private funding towards the infrastructure projects basically by giving them the assurance the quality assurance of that infrastructure project next and last is the sharing of space data so all the quad members have uh, agreed that they will share the space data the satellite based data for peaceful purposes like uh, the disaster response and preparedness sustainable use of oceans and marine resources climate change etc next is green shipping partnership so quad shipping task force has been established it has been launched and the purpose of launching this shipping task force is to establish two to three low emission or zero emission shipping corridors by 2030 okay in the indo-pacific region next is quad open ran forum so this open ran ran is radio access network so let me just tell you it briefly that in simple terms the this forum has been established in order to uh, facilitate communication through uh, communication among the quad members and that communication should be secured so this open ran basically radio access network is the strong network of telecom okay that will facilitate the communication among the quad member countries open ran has been deployed in 35 countries on a pilot or commercial basis already including all the quad countries it facilitates sharing of data via secured and trusted communication network infrastructure among countries quad open ran forum will bring together government and industry leaders for the first time to discuss existing open ran deployment security of open ran networks and how the transition to open ran will promote competition security and technological neutrality in the telecom ecosystem so in short in simple terms it is just to strengthen the telecom sectors within the quad countries as well as the uh, strengthen the communication segment among the quad countries that is the basic logic behind launching this quad open ran forum so
so guys that is all here the long session has ended thank you so much for watching the session and if you have learned something new then do subscribe our channel and also join the telegram group because pdf will be provided there thank you